Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic. Today we're going to be getting the next set of syllogistic rules for our proof theory. These are the transformation rules, the ones that really get going and allow us to do interesting things with our proof. Now, I'm going to introduce a bunch of notations, so let's bring up the whiteboard. And the first thing that I want to do is Find a way to talk about categorical propositions in the abstract, so without saying things about particular terms. So what I'm going to do is introduce just a little bit of notation. If we have a categorical proposition, say, P, A, M, I'm going to indicate this first term with T subscript 1, this, the copula with K, and this second term with T subscript 2. Now, this will allow us to operate at a couple of different levels of generality. So if I want to talk about, say, an E proposition, I could write down T1, E, T2. So here we've got kind of placeholder terms, T1 and T2, but the actual copula. I could also say, talk about any categorical proposition whose terms are P and M without saying anything about the copula by doing something like this. So P and M are actual terms, and then K just stands for any copula. We'll need this because otherwise we will, if we wanted to write out the proposition specifically, we would have to say something like for every term, and you know, if you have these terms or if you have these terms, and it gets a lot very complicated because there are many different renditions that we have to do. So I'm going to get myself a little bit of space. We'll just clear all of this, but I will put a note up here. So term one is just going to represent a categorical term. K stands for one of the three copulae. And T2 is a different categorical term. So these are placeholders. They're, in a sense, variables that we can substitute in any actual categorical terms that we want. So just as uh, another example, so that we've got it up here while we go on to define the rules. If we have, say, um, MAS, let's just get rid of that. MAS would have T1 is M, the copula is A, and T2 is S. So you've got that off to the side so that you can refer back to it any time that you need to. So we have two transformation rules, and each transformation rule is going to come in two versions. The first one is the rule of simple conversion. So rule, simple conversion there will be an E claim version and an I claim version. So basically with simple conversion, if we have written down in our proof at some line an E claim, what we can do with simple conversion is we can take the two terms and swap their order. So the predicate becomes the subject and the subject becomes the predicate. We can also do the same thing if we have an I claim. So simple conversion takes the two terms and swaps their order. So version number one, to write this out explicitly, for any lines I and N. So again, these are just arbitrary numbers that occur in your proof. If we have something of the form T1, E, T2, so it has to be an E claim, but what T1 and T2 are doesn't matter. If this proposition occurs on line I of the proof, again, we don't necessarily know what justification or what annotation line I might have had. We'll just assume that we got it legitimately. If this proposition occurs on line I of the proof, and line N is in the scope of line I, 
then we can write T2 E T1 on line N of the proof. So schematically, what this will look like is we have our scope line. There's stuff going on up here, our two premises. But then at some point, we come to a line I where we have the proposition T1 E T2 with some sort of annotation. We don't know what. If we have that, then later on, we can write down on line I, T2, E, T1. And the justification for this is going to be simple conversion. And we cite the line that has the proposition that we convert it, line I. Then sometimes we will abbreviate this to simple conversion, or sometimes even just to SC. So that's the first version of the rule. The second version is going to look very similar. And so I'm not going to rewrite everything. I'm just going to kind of annotate where the other version differs. This one's the second version here says that for any lines I and N, if we have T1, I, T2 occurring on some line I of the proof, and if N is in the scope of line I, then, oops, I just realized I forgot some words. Let's put some words in. So here, then we need to have, we can write T2, E, T1. <laughs> okay, back to our other version. So for any lines I and N, if an I proposition T1 I T2 occurs on line I of the proof and N is in the scope of line I, then we can write. So again, we swap the order of the terms on line N of the proof. So for instance, here we might have T1 I T2 with some sort of annotation. Then down here at line N, we can do it with the order of the two terms swapped. And this again will be simple conversion citing line I. So if the copula is E or I, you can swap the order of the terms. You cannot do simple conversion on an A claim or an O claim. You can only do simple conversion on an E claim or an I claim. So that is our first transformation rule, the rule of simple conversion. So I'm just going to write this down up here so that I can erase the rest of the board and give us some space to give us some space to do our second rule. The second rule is also going to come in two flavors, but instead of applying to E and I claims, it's going to apply to, it's going to apply to A claims and E claims. So the universal ones are the ones that we can apply this second transformation rule. So let's just get everything cleared away. There we are. So our second transformation rule is, oops, I need to get back to my pencil. Sorry about this, there we go. This next rule is accidental conversion. Accidental conversion or if you want to go a little bit Latin, this is conversion per accidents. This will be important later on when we talk about syllogism mnemonics. So remember that accidental conversion can also be called conversion per accidents. This one says for any categorical proposition, 
uh, with an A copula or an E copula. If, sorry, for any lines I and N, if we have an A claim, so T1, A, T2, occurs on line I of a proof, and N is in the scope of I, so it has to be on the same scope line or more embedded than it. So if these two things are true, then we can write on line N. This time what we do, we swap the order of the terms, but we also change the copula. So if we have a universal affirmative proposition, we will change it to the universal partial corresponding copula. So we swap the order of the terms. So T2 comes first. We change the copula to I, and then we have our first term, T1. And the annotation for this is going to be accidental conversion citing line I. So again, to write it schematically, Here's our scope line. We've got various things going on up here. We don't necessarily know what. We've got various lines. And then we come to line I in our proof where we have something of the form T1, A, T2. Again, with some annotation. We don't know what, and it doesn't matter. We can then, on a later line that is still within the same scope, swap the order of the terms, change the copula from the universal to the partial, and this is going to be accidental conversion applied to line I. The E version of this rule is very similar. But again, I will, I will write it out in exactly the same way. So the other version says that if we have T1 E T2 on line I, so again, let's draw our kind of general schematic proof. Here we have T1, E, T2. Then down at line N, we can swap the order of the terms and change from the universal copula to the corresponding partial one. So that gets us T2, O, T1. And this is again going to be accidental conversion citing line I. So if you have a universal copula, you can apply accidental conversion. You get the A's turning to I's, the E's turning to O's, and at the same time, you swap the order of the terms. So here is our second transformation rule. This is the rule of accidental conversion. Now, before I give some examples, I'm just going to give a very quick summary of the rules that we have. So two rules, each which has a you know, each which has two versions or two types of categorical proposition that it can apply to. It's sometimes helpful to group the rules according to what types of propositions they can be used on. So there, that's good enough. Let's just get a summary. And oops, back to my drawings. There we go. So, summary of the transformation rules. A claims can only be accidentally converted. They cannot be simply converted. E claims can be simply and accidentally converted. They are the only one that both rules apply to. Then we have E claims can only be simply converted. And lastly, we have the O claim 
and you might have seen already that no rules apply to the O claims. So our transformation rules cannot do anything with the O claims. I think I'm going to draw things to a close here. In the next video, I will just give you some examples of how these, uh, these rules can actually uh, function in the context of an actual proof. So I'll give some concrete examples, but I've been nattering on long enough already. The take home message is simple conversion and accidental conversion are the two transformation rules we have. Each of these only applies to two of the types of categorical propositions and no rule applies to the O propositions at all. Let's close things down here and I look forward to seeing you next time where we can go through a couple of examples. Cheers.